Welcome to another episode of Rivals. I'm Scott Mitchell, your host, and that guy in the background is Jason Buck, the other host. He's the hostess with the mostest. Anyways, Rivals has arrived, and now it's time to go to freshman football, freshman college football. In the world of uh, college football today, most freshmen are either playing or they're leaving school. Jack Tuttle uh, was the, re the most recent, the highest recruited athlete at the University of Utah actually left or is leaving or is somewhere on a bus somewhere, I don't know. But uh, he's not playing, Tyler Huntley is. Tyler Huntley's getting better. And Jack Tuttle decided that, uh, you know what, I gotta go play football. Uh, it's happening at Clemson, it's happened at Alabama, it's happening all over the place. Uh, if guys don't play as freshmen, they're out the door. We thought it would be kind of fun to talk about um, our freshman games, the first games that we actually played in our collegiate careers. So, uh, Jason, um, were you ever a freshman? <laughs> yeah, with a mustache. You were a man-child, weren't you? You were just like a big old bruising man-child, huh? Oh, I was just a big old logger, man. Farmer, logger coming out of Idaho into his school. Just, it was funny. Well, I, just, I want you to tell your story, but before you do, I, I just want to get a little bit of feedback from you about all of these these players that, you know, it's like, hey, I, I lost my job or I didn't get the job, and so now I'm transferring. That blows me away. I mean, and I know the game's changed a bit from when you and I played, but there was more patience when we played. I mean, I, I remember, you know, you got in part of, you became a part of a system and you developed. And you know, like at BYU when we were playing in those, those 84, 85, and 86, those, those years, um, back in Lavelle's prime, you know, you, you spent a couple of years developing it. You, you were a great football player, a great football player to get on travel squad as a sophomore. And then you're just playing special teams. I mean, rarely did anybody start until their junior and senior year. And it's just because you're a part of that system and developing. I mean, you look at Bosco and Steve Young and and Mark Wilson and Jim McMahon and all the quarterbacks there. It was, and that's just talking about the quarterbacks here. Everybody, you know, remembers them. They all spent a couple of years backing somebody else up, developing and maturing. And then they had their, you know, two years in the sun. Very rarely did a sophomore get in and almost and get in so these guys now man they just want to they're, they're like spoiled little brats yeah and now they're not playing the freshman year man yeah. they're out the door and now zach wilson who uh was a highly touted freshman at byu is now is now starting uh, halfway through this season so all right uh tell me something jason tell me about what was your first game like when you played as a freshman in college you know Everything was so was bigger than life to me at that time because I'd come from the little tiny school and and Rick's was huge to me. I mean to have seven thousand people at a home game and the crowd was always sold out and it was just it was all big moments. And I remember our first game at Rick's that I was in as a freshman was in Montana. We would schedule these preseason games, if you will, the early season against the NAIA schools in Montana, Montana Tech, Carroll College, Western Montana. And so we'd go up there as freshmen and sophomores and play these really good NAIA, you know, five-year players that were playing in the NAIA playoffs and the national championships. So they were good football players, especially, you know, when they're five-year and we were freshmen and sophomores. And they're generally lower scoring games, one touchdown win type games. And Rick's usually won all of them. We had a great program, but man, I remember going to play in Montana Tech up there, and dude, I it was my first game. I mean, I didn't have my technique down. I was just barely new to D-line, and I remember just beating the living H out of the guy in front of me. Like, I am just beating the hell out of this guy, and I, and I wasn't getting to the quarterback, and, you know, I was making a fair amount of tackles. I, had, I played well, but I wasn't at that next level yet so it was really i was really frustrated at the end of my first game playing super hard playing really good but my focus was you know too much on just beating the crap out of that guy right in front of me right right versus you didn't see you didn't see the big picture of being a defensive lineman no i didn't see the big picture i had tunnel vision my first game right it which, which actually i would appreciate vision. because once you figured out that it wasn't the guy in front of you but it was the quarterback that you were yeah. trying to kill 
So, so maybe, yeah. maybe keeping all of you defensive linemen ignorant would be a good thing to do. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> it would be because I figured it out. I went to my D coordinator at Ricks, and I remember he's like, and I self-taught myself. I went to the D coordinator. He had played pro ball for uh, seven years or so in Canada, maybe longer. And, and I'm like, man, coach, and I expressed my frustration with him. I'm not getting the quarterback. And he's like, Buck. He goes, don't go through him. Go around him. <laughs> And it was just kind of that simple, you know, and I went. Is that what Confu pushing. Confucius say? Yeah. Don't go through them, go around them. Go around them. Yeah. yeah. And everybody out there. <laughs> that's going, when the light bulb yeah, went on, easy. didn't it, Jason? Oh, dude, I was so emotional, though. You know, I was so, you know, just tunnel vision, I guess the best way to say it is because I wanted it so bad. I, I just locked in to crush and kill this guy in front of me. And finally, the light bulb went off. You know, I've watched the NFL on the weekends, and this is a, a refreshment of Rick's. And remember who's big? Mark Gastineau and uh, Joe Klecko were the New York Sack Exchange. Remember when that was huge? Yeah, I remember. And I would watch their moves, you know, on the weekends on the NFL and just learn them and pick them up and, you know, go out and practice them at practice. And then also my light bulbs went off and – I, one game, I got seven sacks. I think game. I saw that Mark Gastineau kind of move. Uh, there's a highlight of you at BYU, and it's not only the the move and the sack, but it's the after dance was yeah. what I saw as well. Yeah, yeah, I just go crazy. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, my first, that rip, I learned from watching Gastineau. Yeah. You know, and call that self-taught. And it, it's funny, I I started getting sacks. I'd get a lot of sacks, and the D-line coach at Ricks would come to me and go, hey, teach the guys your move. And so the coach would ask me to teach D-linemen the move. You know, And he's like, was, hey, where'd you get that? <laughs> so I yeah, just, exactly. I got exactly. it off the I internet. Watch the film. <laughs> All right, um, here, let me share you what my, my story was my, when, I, yeah. when I played as a freshman. So I was at the University of Utah, and I'd redshirted the first year, and then they decided that uh, the next year I was gonna compete against a guy who was a senior, his name was Chris Mendonca. And we would battle through uh, spring football, fall camp. And at the end, uh, Coach Fossil decided that uh, he was gonna have two quarterbacks. Well, you know what happens when you have two quarterbacks, you don't have any quarterbacks. Oh. So oh. How, they, how they decided to do it was Chris was gonna play the first half and I was gonna play the second half. So our first game, we're playing New, uh, New Mexico and Chris went into that game and, and, and played pretty good. We ended up winning the game. Halftime, I don't even go in the gate. And uh, they just kept Chris in. And I'm like, oh, man, I've been snookered. You know, they're, they're telling me all kinds of stories, yada, yada, yada. So I was fuming mad after the game. And I was only mad because the coach said, here's how we're going to do it. He's going to play the first half. You're going to play the second half. So I'm like, great. You know, I, I'm ready to go. Well, I, I was so mad, I went into Coach Fossil's office on Monday after the game, and I looked him in the eyes, just sat in his office, and it was a really short conversation, and I just said, look, I don't appreciate you lying to me, and um, you decide what you want to do, but you promised me that I was going to play the second half of the game, and whenever you decide to tell the truth, I'll be ready to play, and I walked out of his office. That's awesome. And, and, and I didn't even give him an opportunity to like, let's sit down and talk through this. And I was like, I didn't want to hear any coach speak. I didn't want to hear, I didn't want to hear a thing. And I just walked out of his office. So the next week we're playing at San Diego State and uh, we're, we're playing and we're down 28 to nothing uh, in the second quarter. We're just getting killed. So they put me in. Uh, I complete my first eight passes in a row at San Diego State. And, wow. and we scored two touchdowns. We, we ended up losing the game. I think we lost it like 35 to, to 21 or something. And uh, Todd Santos, who, who was a really good quarterback, yeah. they had a good team. Yeah. <clears throat> but I just remember going, man, this is so easy. I mean, that was my first thought. I, I went in the game, I just like, I just completed my first eight passes. We go down, score two touchdowns, just like that. And uh, and then they they start they went uh, they went cover two man, 
So they have two deep safeties and they have everyone yeah. else underneath his man coverage. And I'd never seen that in my life. And all of a sudden I'm like, what do I, you know, where do I, what do I do now? Where do I go? You know, it just really, th really threw me off. Uh, uh -huh. then, I, then I learned, I learned this and I'll never forget it. No one covers the quarterback when they go too deep man under coverage. So oh. you always try to find a little lane with those defensive linemen and you scoot down the field for yeah. a nice 25 yard gain. But I remember yeah. learning that the very first game that, uh, that I played in college, and it stuck with me all throughout my career. I never, I never, I never forgot that. But it was, uh, it was a great moment. And that whole year, I would come in in the second half of every every game. So we played at Wisconsin. I came in. We we came back and won that game. It was on national television. That was an exciting game. We played Colorado State, and uh, John Elway was actually in the stands. Well, he's actually on the sideline watching our game when we played Colorado State. And I, you know, I got to meet John Elway after the game, wow. and he goes, "Boy, don't those really? They really stink when you, you're having to go through those two-minute drills to win a game, but they sure feel good afterwards." That's what he—I just remember him telling me that, which I thought was yeah. pretty cool. And then we had Boise State that I won in a couple other games. So, so I played a lot as a freshman, but I'll, I'll never forget that first game under the lights at San Diego State, completing my first eight passes. That was big. You know what? You told me one cool, cool story once when you and I were just uh, alone together about your redshirt freshman year, and the first time you saw me come out on the field, it. Uh, That's right. Yeah, tell, tell, my tell us that freshman, story. My me true and Sean freshman Knight year, or whatever came walking out. Yeah, so field. we were on we were on the our, our sideline. So my my true freshman year, which was Jason's second year at BYU. And, yeah. and he was the rage. I mean, everyone was talking about how great Jason Buck was and, and this just massive defensive line they had at BYU with, with Jason and Sean Knight. And, and so we, we were out on the field before the game, and the, the, the BYU-Utah game was at, at Utah. Yeah. And out of the visiting locker room, an hour or so before the game, here comes Jason Buck and Sean Knight. And we were like, man, the football field's going to tip over. Those guys are so big. I mean, they were just like, they were so heavy. And Sean Knight was a massive dude. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. And then, huge. and then I, we, well, it wasn't just me, but it was multiple guys. You guys were running around or doing something. And we're like, Sean Knight looks like he can't walk and chew gum at the same time. He just looks so uncoordinated. And we're just like, okay, this guy's supposed to be really, really good, right? Yeah, and uh, I just remember seeing that was a, that was the first time I ever saw Jason Buck, and it was like, you were not coordinated though, Jason. I'll, I'll I'll give you that. But Sean Knight, he was a little bit awkward on his feet. Yeah, yeah, that was big Shawner. He, he was just one of the most giant human beings, like Andre the Giant. He really he is, was. Yeah, he is one of the biggest men and hard work ethic and great attitude and just awesome guy and work hard. But yeah. Yeah, I was the I was the guy that could play linebacker and all the positions. And uh, yeah, <laughs> Sean was not going to play linebacker in other positions. No, 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 no. He was. He gonna was be, he's a plugger. He's a guy that's yeah. just like you just you just move across the ball about two or three feet, and that that's good. And don't yep. move. You pick just, guys up off the ground uh, and just run with them. Just yep. You, Plug you a know, hole. Just a mountain of a of a man. All right. And Jason Trell that year was a really good player too. He was he almost made the Giants. He was uh, our nose guard. He was really good. Yeah, you had some great defenses at BYU, yeah. which I think a lot of people don't really fully appreciate because people don't realize that about Lavelle's past. How many really good strong defenses he has? Yeah, very much so. All yeah. right, this edition of Rivals is over. It's now time to go back to our corners. I'm not Jason Back to our Buck. Corners. But I'm not Scott Mitchell. And thank goodness for that, because the world would be just completely different and completely it, chaotic. It would Anyways, be better. <laughs> good fun. to see you, Jason. All right, you can text yeah. Rivals to 65537. Go to all those social sites and like us. Dial us in on that smartphone of yours. And until then, we will catch you soon.